Hey guys, in this video, we are going to learn about fundamental data type and the input syntax. So basically, input syntax is used when we want to store um, some variable or one variable for later use. This is very simple. We just capture the inputs from the users and the syntax is also very simple. C in, C in, and then double more than symbol with your variable name. This is your variable name. So you can, you can give any variable name. And then you may store one or more than one input at the same time, but the input must be uh, same data type. Okay, for an example, C in, and then we have the symbol, um, double more than, first variable, second variable, third variable, and so on. It depends on how you want to apply this. But before you use C in, you must first understand what is data type, because computer is not humans. Okay, it does not know um, what you're going to store. So you have to first, first, uh, inform the computer, inform the C++ compiler that what do you want to store? And this data type is called integers. It could be any integer from this size to this size, negative to positive. Okay, or you may go for short, which is negative 32,000 up to positive 32,000, long, float, double, and so on. Right? So if you realize, character is the special case where it only accept any alphabet symbols or numbers where we call it as character maybe this is something new for you if this is the first time you learn about programming okay you have to remember the character we receive only one and then that particular input is not a number it's not a symbol but we call it as character so it could be anything anything all right we will learn it uh, later on so most usually um we will we will depend um on the input but uh, for me I prepare for you the data type usually used will be numbers based and characters based and numbers usually we will go for integer double or float it depends on the case so what is the difference between double and float it depends on its size okay if you refer to the table again float number could go from 1.1 something up to power of uh, negative 0 0.38 which is 38 decimal points okay to positive 38 decimal point but when we display and call uh, all of this double and float, you will realize that they will display only four up to four decimal point. This is very usual case. Okay. And then you will later on in the other video, you will learn how to um, do the setting. You set the number of decimal point. Okay. For character base, we have chart and then we have string. So basically string is another, uh, we need another libraries so that we can use the string where string composed of more than one character. Let's say a word, let's say your name. Okay, that we will store in a string. But if we refer to certain character like yes, y e s, but we, we represent using y, then we will use char. Okay, no, n o, we represent using a, a single alphabet of a. So we can um, use char to represent that. So in terms of variable names, it's up to you what type of um, name you want to use. As long as you can remember it easily, then you can just use it. But anyway, there are four rules that we have to uh, follow. The first one is it must start with a letter, any letter, any alphabet. Okay, capital letter or small letter is up to you. Or underscore character, it is acceptable. And the remaining character must be letters or number or underscore. So don't put the question mark, don't put uh, plus signs, right? It is not um, the right way to declare a name. Please remember the first rule. First rule. The second one, you cannot use other symbols. Okay, money, percentage, and then what else symbols we have? Uh, N percent, okay, it is not acceptable. And the space are not permitted as well inside the name. For an example, uh, here is given K volume. If you have K volume and you want to make sure they have a space there, please re uh, replace it with underscore. Please replace with an underscore. Probably your name, first name and last name, uh, Muhammad Ali. So Muhammad space Ali, it is not acceptable. Please replace the space with underscore and then the third one you must remember that variable names are case sensitive meaning that if you have declared k underscore volume all small letters so please when you call it or when you name it please make sure the v one uh, all of the alphabets actually are small letters okay no capital letters if you do this then the compiler will be confused what are you calling i hope you remember this and then the fourth one Please do not use reserve words. So what is reserve words? You have to check the C++ directory, uh, libraries, and learn which uh, words they cannot be used, like double, return, int, okay, all of these we can't use. All right? 
So now we go for the first simple example. It says that create a program that prompts the user to enter an integer and its multiplier. So in this case, we will prompt for two inputs. One is integer, one is multiplier. Uh, maybe it's an integer number and then display the results. All right, let's go for the programming part. Usually we will divide a program into few uh, parts, okay? Uh, for declarations, declarations or initializations, meaning that we declare something. We want to create variables, we put it here. Okay, this is the first part. And the second part will be to display output and also input. The last part is the formula or the process. And then the last part, um, the third part, formula for or the process. And then the last part will be display the output. I hope this become a good practice for you to divide it into few sections because uh, throughout this semester, you will learn about how to create simple program, simple program, and usually simple program will involve uh, these old parts. Now go to the declarations. We need two, two variables. One is enter integer, and then another one is called multiplier. So integer, we declare as int. The name of the integer is up to you. I can put input integer. If you want uh, a short one, you can put input also can. It is acceptable. And then the second one, multiplier. So it's up to you whether you want to use this multiplier as an input or float double. Okay, it, it, integer or float or double. If you put integer, means that you only can multiply the input integer with this multiplier and become integer variables. Okay, we try. Input multiplier. All right, now the declarations part or initialization part is done. Let's display the output. We want to request. We want to request the user to input something. So we see out message. So what are the message? Please enter an integer. All right. After enter the integer, we want to store it in the input in this one, input integer. So to store it, we use C in with this symbol and then follow with the variables that you have declared. All right. And then you copy and paste again. I want to request for please enter the multiplier. And after enter the multiplier, we can store it in here. So this done. This is done for the display output plus inputs. Okay, without further um, continues, we may please compile and run first to see the output. See whether it works or not. All right, please enter the integer uh, five probably. And then please enter multiplier two probably. So it's done. Nothing, no error. Okay, it works very well. So let's continue with the formulas. So we want to display the outputs. So over here, we may um, declare one variables to store the multiplier uh, after the, the, the store to store the result after inputs multiply with the multiplier. Okay, let's say result. Result equal to input integer, multiply, use this symbol for multiplier, a strict symbol, eh? and multiply this number, this integer. So you will realize that results having a red wave over here, and there the comment is, it is undefined, meaning that we never define this in the program. So the compiler does not know what is this result means. Okay, so I can uh, declare it result over here. Okay, result is a variables which will be stored in our memory. Okay, next I want to display the output. So use C out and then the message is the answer is okay, follow the second message, which is my result. Copy and paste it here. Oh sorry, see this is C out. Okay, out less than symbols. C in more than symbol. Okay, now any more errors that have been detected? Okay, no more. So now let's compile and run. All right, please enter integer six. Multiplier is three. Now the answer is 18. All right, so six times three, 18. Now what will happen if I change the multiply to 
um, float. I declare as float. I want to capture more than um, integers, maybe uh, decimal number, 3.5, 3.6. Okay, we try, see what will happen. But when you change this to float, you also have to change the results to float. So why? Okay, let's compile and run. Huh? See what is the result. 6 times 3.5. So by right, after you multiply 6 with 3.5, you should get 21 point something. Am I right? 3.57 times, okay, 21, okay, exactly 21. Okay, we try another example. 6, um, 3.25, let's say. Supposed to be um, 19.5. Am I right? Okay. For this, supposed to be 19.5. Yeah, but you will realize that 19.5.5 is missing. Decimal point is missing. It happened just because of this. Your input integer is integer. You have declared as integer. And then your multiplier, you declare as float. So your multiplier except 3.25 if you do the multiplications. But the result is you declare as integer. So after you have, after the multiply, multiply with the integers, and store it in the results, it will remove, it will remove the decimal point because you say it is integer. Okay, so in order to correct it, we may change to float or double, it's up to you. And then we run again. All right, seven, 2.15. Now it's 15.05. So this is how uh, we solve program one, all right? Of course, there are other ways of solving it. Uh, it's up to you, up to, up to your creativity to solve this. Okay, let's go for example two. Example two shows that create a program that prompts the user to enter a character. We refer to the character and then display the entire character again. Okay, this is simple. Uh, this is simple where we refer to character. Okay, what we should do is declare a character, we store it in the input, and then we output the character again. We refer to example two, we want to prompt the user to enter a character. So when we declare it, we declare as chart and then the name of the input. Maybe I put input underscore chart. This is my input variable name and then display the character again. So I request for user or I prompt the user to enter a character, enter a character and then store the character in input chart variables and is there any formula or process there is no formula or process because our simple program is just want to display the entered character again so under display uh, we see out the character again you have enter what you have enter the character where is the character which is input character. All right, so for this formula or process, we can remove it. So now let's try, compile and run. Enter a character, I enter a B. And then you have entered B. So again, I run it, I enter H capital letter. So you have enter H. So what about if, if I enter more than one character? Okay, let's say it's H1 and 1. Enter. You found that the program only get the H and store it and then return it to the display output. Okay. For the first character. So what if it is not a character, it is not an alphabet, it is a number. We will return 1, 2, 3, 4. And then it will return 1. So whatever you have to understand and remember that whatever symbols or numbers of alphabets that you store in a character, it will just store in a character. It will not declare it as a number. Okay, we cannot multiply the character with a number. Let's say I um I try with integer result. Right? So don't follow me. Eh? I just want to show you the difference. Now after I have the C in, let's say my result is three 
of 4. Okay, result equal to input chart multiply 3. So what will be happen? You see, after we get the input chart, we multiply it with 3 and then we store it in the results and then I display it. After multiply, what is the results? Okay, the results will be here. Okay, let's say 4 times 3 should be 12. So 12 should be the answer. Let's compile and see what is the answer. My input is 4. Okay, 4. You have enter 4. After multiply, you will get 156. You found that 156 is not the actual answer. 4 times 3 should be 12. So why it becomes 156? Okay. So there is an error. There is an error. So please make sure um, you don't simply multiply the input or declare the input with chart and then multiply them. All right? It will work. It will, it will not give you any errors. But this um, is considered part of the runtime error uh, that you cannot. Then it will create troubles for you. All right? So when you declare any variables, please think carefully. What is the data type that you should declare? All right. Now let's go for example three. The example three says that create a program that prompts the user to enter his or her first name and then displays the, the entered first name again. All right, this is quite simple. First steps we have to do is to define the first name. So I define as string first name. Don't forget, there is no space, it's allowed. It. I use string because your first name could be more than one alphabet. A character is not suitable at all. So I declare as string. And then request for enter the first name. And then store it using C in. And then we have to display the output. This is quite simple and straightforward program. Your first name is okay. first name. All right, let's try. Compile and run. Enter your first name. Hello world. Can we do this? There is a space. Okay, um, I remove this words. Maybe my first name is hello. And when I enter, it will capture and show your first name is hello. Nothing is wrong. Right. Right. When I play again, let's say my first name is Hello World. What will happen with the word? Let's see. You will found that it will only cater about hello. Why? Because there is a space here. When there is a space here, compiler automatically will not concern about the rest of the words. Okay. And then again, my name. How about this? And same thing, it will capture only chin, but not the rest of the words. So in order to solve this, usually we will declare more than one word to solve this. For an example, I declare first name and then Okay, so your name, please enter your name. I store the first name and then I store the last name. Okay, then I display during display in order to separate them. Hmm, okay, before before I give you the answer, let's see what will happen if I do this. All right, so we compile and run. Let's say my name is uh, Moha Mohammad Ali. And I enter, you will get my your first name is Muhammad Ali. Okay, I forgot to change this first name. It's supposed to be your name is Muhammad Ali with a space. In this case, we we don't have any space, so you have to add a space. Double quote with a space and follow with the less than symbols. Let's choose your name. Okay, now let's try it again. Muhammad Ali. So your name is Muhammad Ali. 
So in search request, we declare first name and last name. So what will happen if you have um, three words in your name, like mine, Shane Kim On, then you have to consider about the middle, middle name. All right. So I hope um, this uh, video will help you to understand what is C in, how, how to use C in, and how to declare a data type. And usually we will use integer, string, character, float, and double. Okay, it depends on the situations. And thank you. Thank you for watching this video.